Well, here we are this week in indoor football. Oh boy, we got some good stuff coming. Let's talk the IFL first. The IFL Hall of Fame ain't fluid. Rest in peace, Carl Sims. Still continue to rest in peace, brother. And Charlie Bosselman, those guys are the 2022 IFL Hall of Fame class. Congrats to all three. You earned it for your accomplishments on and off the field. Um, so there you go with that. Uh, the Tulsa Oilers from the ECHL. That is a hockey league. It is a, uh, like a lower tier level hockey league. Uh, they're going to own that new Tulsa team that's been rumored. This t Tulsa team has been you know, floating around as an IFL team for quite some time. It's been a few months since that got leaked out from our favorite um, arena fan poster love FB um, and this 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 will be probably the newest um, IFL team this will make it what number 16 yeah number 16 so that's good there um, I highly doubt you know, it will be a CIF team, and I highly doubt it will be an NAL team. It's like 90% of, you know, of the whole Tulsa thing has been, this Tulsa team's going to the IFL. There's only been certain doubters, and you probably know which of those doubters are. You probably know who those doubters are, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so there's that. Um, so in the playoffs, you know, the first round, the Eastern Conference semifinals on Friday night, Frisco put the beat down on the Iowa, put up 60 plus on them, put up 60 plus on them on Friday night. Massachusetts, on the other hand, they hosted Quad City. They uh, they missed the field goal, you know, a uh, PAT attempt in overtime, and it was just unfortunate for you know, Mass, they they missed their PAT. Quad City did not. And that was really the difference in this game. Because, I mean, this was this, this Quad City Mass game was real fun from beginning to end. So, next Friday night, going to be a showdown in Frisco between Quad City and the Frisco Fighters. And, you know, it's, it's going to be fun to see what the Steve Willis can do. Um, can they beat Frisco? They, they might be able to, actually. They might be able to beat Frisco, but I'm still picking Frisco in that game. Um, just, just so y'all know. The game that's on right now, it's about to wrap up as I post this. It's Arizona at Duke City. Duke City, they were tied with Arizona at 1.14-14. It was 21-14 when things changed. Um... A goal line stand in which Duke City fumbled the ball. And then you know you, got, you also got you know um, a bad interception, and then an onside kick by Arizona. I mean the, the first half was just like it, it just it just has you know been a complete complete domination by Arizona. They are it, it, it's still about a minute or so left, so we'll stick with it. You know, until it goes final, because we still have some stuff to go over. I do have to write about some things here, uh, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, there's also the NAS Wranglers. They took care of Tucson last night. Uh, you know, they won by 15 plus. So NAS and Arizona, the Northern Arizona Wranglers and the Arizona Rattlers will be throwing hands at the Western Conference Final next Saturday night. Uh, I do believe that is confirmed to be next Saturday night. Uh, so they'll be throwing hands down in Phoenix. So Duke City, they also got a new head coach. Yeah, so it's already been confirmed. It'll be next Saturday, 8 p.m. Central, uh, 6 Pacific, out west in Arizona. So that, that like I just saw it on telecast, there's a minute left to go in this game. Uh, Duke City has not scored in the second half, and Arizona has the ball, and they're gonna they're they're, they're gonna run out this clock. Uh, so there's that. So there's all the IFL stuff. Um, gonna be one hell of a one hell of a uh, 
you know, conference finals, the semifinals really, next weekend, starting on Friday night and continuing on Saturday. In the NL, David Wilson, he pushed an official last weekend, and, uh, you know, he got suspended indefinitely. He was at the Jacksonville home game, you know, this um, this past, you know, yesterday. Um, but unfortunately, he's not playing. I don't think he's playing in the playoffs. But the NAL, the NAL, you know, they trudged along through their season, and they have made it to the playoffs. And, you know, the final week of the regular season in the NAL was, you know, it was trying to determine what in the world was going to happen with these playoff scenarios. You had Albany had already clinched the home playoff game. So it was really determining who in the world is going to go to the second, who in the world is going to get that second playoff game, who's traveling where, and who's going to be the number one seed. Albany, they barely got by San Antonio last night. We're talking barely. But they clinched that number one seed. Carolina, they beat Jacksonville last night in a thriller. And Columbus, they whooped up on Orlando. That that that's real sad. A lot of people are saying, "Oh well, Orlando gave up on the players." That that's not that's not how this works. Tanking in, in, in the indoor game that that doesn't exist. Come on now, stop that. So naturally, Albany and Jacksonville because Jacksonville lost, they slid down to the four seed, and Columbus and Carolina. We could get a, a wide variety of combinations. For the NAA championship, because it, honestly, playoffs are wide open. Like this is wide open. I don't think I've seen, you know, a chase for a championship be this wide open in the indoor game in quite some time. Um, I feel it's looking a little bit more clear cut. You know, a lot of people are saying it's going to be Frisco, Arizona, but honestly, the NAL, it 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 could be crazy. It could be crazy, as you know. It's just just gonna be wild, uh, man. Cannot wait. Another big thing is the uh, Spokane Shock stuff. Yeah, a lot of leftover items got sold this past week. Um, unfortunately, this was not conducted online, and you already know Sam Adams hasn't paid anybody. He, you know, he, he ain't paid nobody. So instant auction and estate sales, they auction off, you know, jerseys, merch, office furniture, trophies, all sorts of different stuff. I believe there was some other stuff there, like Wichita Nighthawk stuff. Uh, so it, it was crazy. Man. Man, man, man. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is just, just the, that's probably one of the saddest ways to go out because before the season, you'd think... Oh, well, things are going to be, you know, looking good for Spokane. Maybe things will be, you know, looking good. And then they just don't have a team. They have a, a guy that can't seem to pay, you know, anybody anything. Because I don't think he's paid anybody anything. Uh, at least from what I read. So it, it's unfortunate. Um, I'll skip over this one thing because I'm saving that for last. Speaking of Wichita, the Wichita Force, they're calling themselves the AFA champions. Why do I ask that? Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, they're calling themselves the AFA champions, and you're wondering probably why. It's probably because West Texas and the AFA have probably, you know, separated ways. And who knows how long these, who knows how long the, you know, the AFA and West Texas have separated themselves from each other. But another West Texas team, the Buccaneers, they left a couple players stranded in El Paso. There was another article and stuff like that that came out this week in which the West Texas Buccaneers, who, by the way, they didn't play in the Arizona-Duke City game has gone final. They didn't play this year. They didn't play. So, you know, leaving players stranded. They were supposed to play the Wichita Force at one point this year back in, like, May, and they didn't play. Like, this is just absolutely disappointing. You know, like, 
West Texas has been on a downward trajectory ever since they were established. You know, the Buccaneers, anyway, not not the Warbirds. Um, so it, it's just astounding to me. It's astounding to see that once again, this West Texas Buccaneers team has done one of the dirtiest things in in the game, just being absolutely terrible in what they do. Empty promises will not get you anything in this world. And then the NAL Fayetteville team, they're going to be known as the Buffaloes. It's, it was implied, but somebody had said it last night, officially on one of the telecasts last night in the NAL. So, Buffaloes, there you go. That's our Fayetteville team. Who knows where the NAL will expand next. Again, follow your boys. You know, the Inside the Walls podcast. My boys, Zach and Jim, they have all that stuff for you. Um, so now let's get to the big thing. The West Texas Warbirds and the Dallas Prime. I said I was going to rant about it, and I, I got it. I got it. This fight generated buzz throughout the entirety of last weekend. Probably it went on until the middle of the week this week. You got dudes hitting guys. You know, you know, some dude who I believe he got arrested, you know, later on. He hit a guy with a chair. Hit a whole man in the head with a chair. This brawl, not only did it last 10 plus minutes, there was another brawl, I think, earlier. You, you know, players that put the blame on each other. Fans are putting the blame on each other as to who started it. You know, you know, people are saying, oh, well, the Dallas Prime started it. They were getting chippy all game because they were getting their rabbits whipped. And then, you know, some people were saying that West Tech, the, the Warbirds were throwing racial epithets. But, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it could have been that. But, I mean, I, I genuinely do not know what started it. But I do know this. This is the wrong way to ha- This is the wrong way to, you know, make it happen. This is the wrong way to do it. You know, this is not how you get people to come back to your team for next year. Because remember, West Texas, they don't have a league, you know, probably. More than likely, they don't, more than likely, they don't have a league, you know, you know, like West Texas and, and the Dallas Prime, they both release statements, but it's just completely unacceptable behavior. I don't care if it's 50 to 6, I don't care if it's 50 to 50, be respectful on the field, and you won't have this type of stuff. You know, don't let your emotions get the best of you. Because you let your emotions get the best of you, you're gonna well, you're gonna be ended up like Antonio Brown out here. You know, it, you know, just just walking off the field in shame, and that's exactly what both these teams did last weekend. Walking off the field in complete and other shame. I am disappointed in both of these teams. Disappointment because again, the Dallas Prime have been you know they've been a class team this year beating several indoor teams. West Texas is undefeated and they were unfairly, you know, probably unfairly shafted in their own league that they helped start because they started this league pretty much. But all that all that all that nonsense is out the window now. It's out the window. Disgusting. Disgusting, that's what it is. You gotta be kidding me, man. Unbelievable. Hopefully, both teams learned their lesson. You know, really, you know, release the statements to try to calm and ease the pain and everything. But the Dallas Prime, West Texas Warriors, I got a long off season. You better, you better do something better than what happened last weekend to keep people. With you both. So, with all that being said, the the, the, the IFL, um, the, the 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 Western and Eastern Conference Finals, they're set. Next Friday and Saturday night, it's going to be lit. The NAL playoffs, those semifinal matchups are set. It's going to be lit. Both those games are next Saturday night. Cannot wait to see y'all next Saturday night. It'll be around 11, 11.30, 
when I come back to y'all and talk, you know, this week in indoor football before our final two editions of the season, August 6th, because I, I think I want to do something August 6th and make, you know, plans, you know, for something, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen now. And then August 13th, obviously, probably it'll be, you know, the same time, maybe like 10, 10 30, August 13th, or potentially August 14th, depending on, you know, what the NAL does, because the IFL Championship is set for August 13th. We don't know when in the world the NAL Championship will be set. Six games left to go, and two champions will be crowned. Let's get it. See y'all next Saturday for this week in indoor football. See y'all on Thursday when we talk SummerSlam, because there's a lot of stuff we got to talk about with SummerSlam. Until then, Big Boy Sports, signing out. See you soon.